Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are one welcome to the Bahamian American Cultural Society's uh, media initiative, Them Bahamians. And uh, I would extend a, a welcome again to our internet uh, people who have uh, tapped into us uh, throughout the world, and, I, and especially to the Bahamians, to the Bahamas, and I hope you are listening to us, and because we have a, a good program for you this afternoon, and uh, I'm also uh, wish to, to, to announce to you that uh, this week is, is Internet Week. In, in, in New York City, in which New York City is, can expect uh, up to, up to uh, 45,000 uh, people into the city who would uh, talk about Internet and update our, our community in that regard. But our purpose of uh, meeting here this afternoon and to, for this program is to discuss with our guest a very important matter. And I want to say that I am I'm here uh, with um, Myron Roll, uh, uh, who has, has is a young gentleman of the new generation and has um, developed uh, some very interesting uh, ideas and and uh, has behind him some very important accomplishments uh, I was I read about uh, Myron, Myron uh, role he is both a Rhodes Scholar and also an all-american and uh, he is beginning a new initiative uh, called the Mobile Hospital uh, and is dedicated to the health of individuals and their education, wellness, and fitness. And I would like to welcome you to our program this afternoon, uh, Mr. Roll, and uh, invite you to explain to our audience uh, the various aspects of your life and your mission and your mission of your foundation, and so that they will begin to contribute to uh, the accomplishments that you would like to to, to achieve. Uh, I would let's let's start with um, the mobile hospital because that is the the main issue that I wish to concentrate on this afternoon. Uh, could you explain to us? Uh, I know you have a foundation, uh, but could you explain to us just exactly what the uh, mobile hospital consists of? Certainly. Uh, well, first, I want to thank you for inviting me here and uh, thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, this is an awesome opportunity for me to be able to speak about some of the things that I'm passionate about, uh, especially health care and delivering good quality health care to people uh, who may be in need. Uh, my parents are from the Bahamas, born and raised there. Three of my four older brothers uh, born and raised in the Bahamas, and uh, obviously it's in my blood. It's I'm, I'm very tied to uh, to the country and to the people, uh, and you know I always feel proud to be able to represent the Bahamas and uh, everything that I do, whether it's in the U.S. or overseas. When I was at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, anywhere I go, I carry with my with me the name role and also very being, good. A, being a Bahamian. Very good. Very proud of that. Um, but the mobile the mobile hospital is this, you know. Now we're moving into a new wave of technology, new wave of medicine, uh, where it's not necessarily imperative to have bricks and mortar ground structure built in one place, because then you sort of limit yourself and restrict yourself to the residents of that particular area. So what a mobile hospital can do, uh, you can fly medical materials and fly the medical professionals to the remote area, land on a soccer field or maybe a football field, for instance. 
you can blow up this hospital uh, almost like a dome. If you've ever seen like the yes, football yes. stadiums and things, you blow up like a dome uh, that can be air conditioned. It can be uh, have generators uh, that can keep the diabetic uh, medicine and other medicine materials cool and, and such. And it can provide good quality service, good free service. That's what we want to do uh, to the residents. Now, I chose Exuma because both my grandparents uh, paternally and maternally are from Exuma. Stevenson obviously has a huge uh, role in my life, um, you know, with a lot of history, Roll Town, Roll Ville, it's, it's all a part of me. Uh, but we're going to get into we're going to oh. we're going to get we're going to get into <laughs> right. that some more, some, some more but yeah. but that's that's, that's very no. very interesting and very rewarding. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So the the, the mobile clinic having it one place, um, stopping over in, in one of the family islands and then moving to another family island, another one, another one, based on the different needs and based on uh, the requirements of the residents there, the the health needs and health issues. Uh, it can be very flexible. It's agile and it just can service a broader range of people and I think that's uh, what I would love to do for the Bahamas and I think it's moving in towards the 21st century delivery of good quality medicine. And that, 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 that's very interesting because uh, you know uh, the first thing I would think of when you talk about mobile hospital is uh, probably this is a little archaic <laughs> but you know that you, you have a, a huge bus and you, you, you take the bus there, and, and so the, the initial question, and, and I, when I talk to some people, they, they, they think that, well, well, wait a minute, how, how, does, how is this going to work? <laughs> he's in the United States, is he going to get this big bus, and how he's going to transport that to Nassau, which is the capital of the, of the Bahamas, and, and, and then he's gonna, how he's going to get that out to Exuma, which is one of the outlying islands. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but this is this is quite interesting when you when you talk about uh, you know blowing it up and making it at a tent yeah. and uh, that's extremely uh, interesting. I I, re I remember when uh, man I am from the Bahamas and so we, uh, you are uh, you indicated that your roots are in the Bahamas from the Exuma and I remember when the preachers used to come uh, evangelists. And they used to they have these they used to have these tents, right. and uh, you used to be under the tent listening to their their their, their sermons and their, their singing and and dancing, and and that's uh, that's a very interesting. Well, how the healthcare? I, I, it's um, I'm not acquainted. How the healthcare is it in in Exuma? Did you do any studies in terms of? Well, I know healthcare. Uh, Exuma is your, you have some gene, genealogical connections with Exuma, right. but is the health care there as so bad or it, it is very well needed, very much needed? Well, it, it's, it's certainly not where it could be. Uh, and, you know, my interest in Exuma, as you said, comes from my family history, but also because I see that there are diabetics there that perhaps can't be seen or get good access to medicine that they might need, and there's hypertension there, and there's coronary artery disease, and there's um, obesity that happens everywhere. It's not just in Exuma and the other family islands, and even in the United States of America, developed countries and developing countries are going through an obesity epidemic where people are eating cheaply processed foods, cheaply processed materials, uh, and they are just, you know, over-consuming, uh, which leads to, um, you know, obesity, which leads to other diseases uh, that, I, that I've mentioned, other emerging non-communicable diseases. So Exuma is, is lacking in some areas. Uh, I, I don't want to make it seem like it's in dire straits, but anything that I can do to service the Bahamas and service, again, this particular area that has special interest to me and my heart and my soul, uh, that's what I want to do. That's very, that's very good. As I said, that the Bahamas is, uh, has uh, most of the, the doctors and the, and the professionals that have uh, United States connections. They have trained in the, in the medical schools in, the, in Columbia and New York University and uh, especially in Miami and also the University of the West Indies. Uh, so uh, they, they do have uh, trained doctors and but not enough not enough and uh, and uh, let me say to our audience is that you mentioned uh, high blood pressure diabetes uh, obesity and 
uh, that let me be very frank is that the, the Bahamas is uh, 85 to 90, 95 percent uh, Af uh, African uh, black people, and uh, you, as we know in the medical profession, there are certain diseases that seem to hang on Absolutely. to certain ethnic groups. Absolutely. Well, uh, saying that the Bahamas is uh, 85 to 95 percent uh, black population of African descent. Uh, indicates right off the bat that they are subject to hypertension, obesity, and uh, and uh, di di diabetes, and those are the top priorities. When I read anything about the health care in the Bahamas, that are of great concern to uh, to the people of the Bahamas, and and uh, I would say off the bat that there is a need in Exuma for those kinds of services. Exactly. How, how advanced are you are? And is it, is it just conceptually now you want to, to do this or have you, have you put anything practical in the place already? Yeah, uh, we have been in talks with um, a few different companies that actually have these solar ships, mobile ships that can uh, they fly very low levels, uh, very slow speeds, but are equipped to take all this medical infrastructure down to uh, a remote island or land in, in one of the family islands. So we have been in discussion with them. We've had the plans uh, drafted up. And, and uh, it, you know, the thing that I think I can bring as well as, you know, not only with my medical knowledge, which I'm about to uh, increase, or I guess augment, going to Florida State University Medical School next week, actually, to be a neurosurgeon, but my connections as being an NFL player, uh, having those professional football connections, uh, my connections being, you know, a standout college football American at Florida State, my Oxford Rose Scholar classmates, uh, my President Clinton connections, I had an opportunity to travel to Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo with President Clinton uh, two years ago, his group to work with um, women who have been sexually violated in the eastern part of Congo and Bukavu uh, in the South Kivu province. So those different resources and connections that I have, I would love to just throw those on the Bahamas and throw those on the medical community down there to see what we can do as far as developing resources and getting people aware and getting people to jump on board to what we're doing. So uh, there's a lot of planning that goes involved in it. My foundation is obviously heavily involved, but as many people as I can pull in and say that, hey, the Bahamas is oh, we're great. You know, we still have things we want to get accomplished, and if you can help us, you know, you'll my, move support. My goodness, uh, did you hear all of that? <laughs> I didn't give an appropriate introduction to this gentleman. <laughs> I mean, he has, he has mentioned must be five to ten areas of importance in which he can tap into. <laughs> and... Uh, we, we, we're talking, as I said in the beginning, to a Rhodes Scholar, and uh, and you mentioned that you also are associated with the Clinton Initiative. Yes. Now I know the Clinton Initiative, but what I know about it, it is it, it is uh, it has helped, is, has helped, and still helping a lot of people, not only in America but throughout the world, throughout the world, and. Uh, and you, you have had experience in the, with the Clinton Initiative, have you? I have. I have. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I won the Rhodes Scholarship, President Clinton is also a Rhodes Scholar. Right. He, he wrote me a letter and told me congratulations, and he invited me to his uh, School of Public Service in his library in Little Rock, Arkansas. I went there, spoke, then I had a chance to go to Clinton Globe Initiative U, which is a uh, uh, a, a whole weekend centered around college students getting involved in their community and getting involved in philanthropy. So I had a chance to meet and spend time with them there. Then he recruited me to be a part of this thing called the Clinton Globe Initiative Lead, which is a group of young global leaders, which included myself and Jeff Gordon, the race car driver, and Ashley Judd, an actress, and other Lauren Bush and Usher and other you know young people uh, who have this mindset to change the world in some kind of way. We had a retreat in Aspen, Colorado, and then we flew over to the eastern part of Africa, again, to meet these sexually violated women who, uh, you know, it seemed like their life had been put in so much turmoil and strife, but they've come together and coalesced around this idea that although they've had a tough life, uh, although they've been raped many times, although they've been placed in this social station of being inferior, they're not giving up because they have children to care for, because they still have breath in their body, and it was so encouraging to see that. So. 
um, going over there with the President Clinton group, he just wanted to see what ways could CGI and the Clinton Foundation alleviate and assuage some of the issues going over there in Congo and Rwanda. And uh, it was an amazing experience. He's someone who I've looked up to for a very long time. And now having the chance to meet him at the age of 22 and then now I'm 26 and still have a relationship with him, it's uh, just been a blessing. He is, he is a wonderful guy. Sorry. Wonderful guy. You know, and uh, even uh, as president, I, I, I fell in love with, with, his, with, his, with, his, with his initiatives, with his ideas. And uh, and uh, even after the presidency, I mean, he, he's, <laughs> he's taken on the world, Absolutely. not only the United States, but is doing wonderful work to the world. And uh, I'm so happy to hear that you are enthusiastic about it and you're a part of it. And uh, and it's there where you get some of your motivation yes. to to give back to the Baham to the to, to the Bahamas and to and, and, and to, to to Exuma. Have you have you visit have you visited Exuma? Oh yes, multiple times. Multiple I've times. Visited Exuma multiple times. Uh -huh. uh, you know, my I, I was raised in New Jersey. Uh -huh. uh, and but the thing the beautiful thing about my adolescent formative years was that although I was raised in New Jersey around Jewish people and Italian people and Irish Catholic people, my parents, my mother, my father, Whitney and Beverly Roll, they both made sure that I had the behaving culture within me. They made sure I was eating conk and fire engine. They made sure I was listening to the music. They made sure I knew who Sir Lyndon Pinling was and I could write a book report on him like it was nothing, just like I could write a book report on George Washington. I mean, they made sure I had those fundamental principles of being behaving and never left it. I always went in the summer times back to the Bahamas, uh, to Nassau and parts to Exuma as well. So it's, you know, although I was raised in the States, I, I felt that it was like a parallel um, growth in my American culture, my Bahamian culture, and the fact that now I'm of age and ample resources and apt mind to go and do something for a country that I've loved for so long uh, is just a tremendous thing for me. My goodness, let me shake your hands again. <laughs> he mentioned the Bahamian Bahame, Bahame, Bahame culture. I, 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 don't, I don't know you. Let me be a little selfish here and, and, and say that, that um, when I introduced the, the program, I said the Bahamian American Cultural Society and uh, that is the parent body that brings them Bahamians to to the world. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, and part of our mission, part of our mission is to uh, to improve a greater understanding among peoples, among individuals, among people, and uh, among peoples different countries because uh, and to break down the obstacles to peace and because our our vision is is that man should live in a peaceful environment in which people interchange ideas in which people enjoy did even not only enjoy their similarities not to talk about things that they that they themselves love, but begin to appreciate differences. Right. Because in different, when you appreciate appreciate differences, in differences informs you and makes you grow. Okay, so it's 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 when you talk about the Bahamian culture, that is part of our mission and part of our objectives to bring to the world the Bahamian culture and some and the best of its values. You know, when you talk about culture, you don't, there, there are lots of, lots of things in culture that probably not should be passed on. <laughs> so it's an educational process too, Absolutely. to identify and to analyze and to, to carve out the values, the great values, and to your parents' credit, you know, although you were born in the United States, you know, they made sure that you know from whence you came. That's right. Okay, and to go, and now you are so much involved in that, and never forgot those people who have been left behind and uh, who need your assistance in Exuma and, and, and in, the, in the Bahamas. I hope that uh, that the, the Bahamian American Cultural Society can be a vehicle, 
through which uh, you will work, and we promise to work with you. And uh, and uh, and I would encourage people out there who are listening to us to join this initiative, join the force to bring your ideas the mobile hospital to fruition. But uh, let me let me turn to to. Uh, how did you, um, in in developing, in growing up with this culture, your parents, your parents were from the Bahamas. Did you ever, my, uh, did you ever had problems in assimilating that part of the culture with the American culture? Uh, you know, not not so much because I always felt that having that Bahamian culture intrinsically intertwined in my DNA made me made me special and it it allowed me to feel like hey you know this is something that's unique amongst my peers and it's something that I should be proud of my parents always told me that you belong at the table with anyone else regardless of what their color looks like regardless of their money and regardless of where they come from you belong at that table of successful people and high achievers and as long as you feel like you belong that's the first step into actually achieving and having that good success so i brought with me my Bahamian culture my christianity i brought with me my parents i brought with me all of these things to the table and said hey here my role is and here my role will sit and i'm going to carve out a place in my in, in this world for my success, and hopefully after I, you know, get the girth and get the uh, the knowledge and and get the equipping, uh, then I can go and share those those beautiful things with other people. And now having a foundation and now having this initiative down in uh, in the Bahamas is is a part of the growth that hopefully my parents envisioned for me a long time ago. So to answer your question, there wasn't uh, too much difficulty trying to assimilate the Bahamian culture, the American one. It's a special one. It's one that my my friends took interest in. They wanted to learn about the music that we listened to. They wanted to okay. learn about our dances and our festivals and our food. They, they loved when my mother would cook food for me and bring it into class and stuff like that. <laughs> they, they would love all that stuff. So, you know, it was, it was so neat to, I guess, stand out in a way to my friends who didn't have the opportunity to experience it, or maybe if they did, it was briefly on a cruise or something like that you know, in and out of Nassau and, and so forth. So uh, they would always look at me, oh, Meyer, you're the Bahamian friend I got. So, you know, anything island related, let me talk to you about it. So I kind of became the voice for it. I, I appreciated it. Okay, very, very good. Tell me a little bit about your foundation. Well, my foundation was started in 2009. Uh, it's called the Myron L. Rowe Foundation, and we do several different philanthropic activities that deal with health, wellness, and education domestically in the U.S. and internationally, particularly in the Bahamas. The one we've mentioned already, with the mobile hospital in the Bahamas, in Exuma. That's our huge initiative that's very ambitious of us, but it's one that you know, we started in 2009 and uh, we'll just continue to push away at it uh, so that we can make that huge difference. I also run a wellness and leadership academy for foster kids in the state of Florida. I looked at foster kids in Florida and saw that these kids were sort of ostracized and placed in the category of other. They were moved around from group home to group home. They, um, they didn't have the upbringing that I did as far as my parents being married for 41 years and having four of the brothers that loved to care and nurtured me. Uh, so I looked at these kids and said, you know, they might need a role model and they might need someone sure. to, to teach them, hey, you can be successful too if you use me as the example and then go farther than I ever went in my life. So right. created this Wellness and Leadership Academy for them, five years strong. We do it in partnership with the state of Florida and Department of Children and Families. I do an Our Way to Health is an anti-obesity program for Native American kids, the Seminole Tribe of Florida, the Navajo, Hopi, and Pueblo Indians in New Mexico and Arizona as well. We got a U.S. federal government grant from the U.S. Secretary of uh, Interior uh, to run that program, and that's gone well. And then lastly, we do an academic workshop that's called Roads to Success for Florida foster kids as well, uh, teaching kids about how to be good students and, uh, and how to use the different tools. It's an ongoing program. It's, it's an ongoing program. Ongoing. Ongoing. So since 2009, we've raised over $500,000 and service about 1,300 individuals uh, in Florida and the Bahamas, and it's been uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Very, 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 very good. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I looked at your, your, your internet and I, I saw the the, the academy and, yeah. the, <laughs> and it's it's a it's a multi it's the diversity yes. cultural diversity and 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 in the children there and I. <laughs> 
uh, when I talk about the, the Seminole Indians, yes. the Seminole Indians, uh, right. and uh, there is a connection between the Bahamas and the Seminole Indians. Mm. You, the Seminole Indians uh, um, uh, uh, have in, inhabited certain portions of the Bahamas. I heard that. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, some of their some of the surnames in the Bahamas are, so, uh, are Seminole. Wow. Seminole in, 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 in the names. Uh, and, and so, in fact, uh, there was someone in the Bahamas who did a study of the Seminole Indians and have written, written a book uh, exp explaining the influence and the impact that they have had on the, uh, the, the, on the Africans and the uh, and uh, the other ethnic groups in the Bahamas. Uh, I always say that uh, living in New York City, that that the Bahamas itself is a very cosmopolitan place. The 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 the, 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 the multiplicities of ethnicities uh, of, of 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 people in the Bahamas is a it's like it's almost like a subset of of of, of New York. Uh, someone said in New York you can stand on the corner, and there's no no place else in the world that you can stand on the corner uh, on the corner, and hear in the space of five minutes uh, ten different languages. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and and the Bahamas, especially Nassau, is a very cosmopolitan cosmopolitan city. Okay. Um, do you also uh, was an all American? Right. Uh, All-American football. Tell, explain to me what All-American means. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't have a clear picture of what All-American <laughs> means. Well, All-American is the top uh, distinction you can earn as uh, a collegiate athlete. It means you are uh, one of the top players. You've been recognized by your peers, by writers, um, media writers, uh, by coaches, as being one of the standout players in the country. I went to Florida State University as I was rated as the number one high school player in the country coming out of high school. Uh, I had 83 scholarship offers so schools all over the country. But actually, Numero uno, people. <laughs> Young people listening out there. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, it, was, it was a great time. I, I was looking at University of Miami and Michigan and uh -huh. Syracuse and USC and Georgia, but I ultimately chose Florida State University because we had a head coach there, Bobby Bowden, who was 73 years old uh, when I got there. And he's had this old grandfather kind of figure to him. He's very Christian, so I knew I can grow as a Christian there. My spirituality could, could increase. Uh, he was committed to me being a great student and a great athlete, uh, so I appreciated that. Uh, but, you know, I had a chance to play uh, as a freshman early at Florida State University and uh, became an All-American, did well in the field. I won a Rhodes Scholarship in 2008, which sort of turn my football career from right to left because right from college I wanted to go to the NFL and I was projected to go in the second round of the National Football League and be drafted and earn two million dollars. But uh, I chose to go to Oxford and get my master's degree in medical anthropology, set out for a year and a half, came back to the National Football League and got drafted in the sixth round much later and only earned seventy thousand dollars, got drafted by Tennessee Titans uh, in Nashville, played there two years, and then one year with the Steelers, and finished up there. So, it's been a it's been a wild journey athletically for me, but it's been uh, it's been an honor to play at the highest level in college, and then play in the National Football League, the highest level, and also earn a Rose Scholarship while I'm doing it. So it's been great. Well, that's very very good, a good, very very major accomplishment in your life. In Thank your you. real life, did you was there uh, did you was it was it difficult to make the decision to go yeah. to not to be drafted, yes. <laughs> not to not to accept a draft, yeah. uh, but uh, but uh, opted to go to uh, to where did you go? You went to Oxford. 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 To Oxford yeah. Yes. It was uh, it was a, the hardest decision of my life. It was very difficult. Ever since I was younger, I've always wanted to play in the National Football League. Uh, I've always wanted to be an NFL player. Um, you know, it's something that has been my goal, my 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 dream since I was younger. Uh, and when I got to Florida State and had success on the, on the football field there, this dream was right in front of my face. And I realized that here, I, it's, it's there for me. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can hear it. It's right here. But going to Oxford was, was, was just too great to pass up. 
you know, because not only would I be able to edify my intellectual capital, not only would I be able to meet new people, not only would I be able to travel around Europe and see new places, uh, but going to Oxford, choosing studies over sport could show younger people, black, white, girl or boy, American or Bahamian, or non-American or non-Bahamian, that, you know, it is possible to, to uh, go for your goals and your dreams academically, scholastically, without sacrificing something else. You can be a good scholar. You can put your studies first. You can have your priorities in order. You don't have to succumb to the pressure of people saying, Myron, go to the NFL, make $2 million, you know, get to the league. Nobody gets there. You have a chance to go there, so you should go. I was getting a lot of that pressure. A lot of oh, those I voices imagine, were on me. I imagine. Certainly. <laughs> but now people yeah, look you know, at me as sort of sort of a role model that said, hey, he passed up the NFL, passed up the money, passed up the league to pursue his education, and we can look at him as someone who uh, has his priorities in order and is doing things the right way. And I've heard from many people through correspondence, letters, emails, you know, tweets, Facebook messages, that they look at me as sort of a standard of the true scholar-athlete as the epitome. And it's um, something that I, I certainly didn't go out and, and, and choose as my goal, but it's something I sort of walked into. You certainly you you were a change. It. You changed the message. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the, at, least, at least a, a major message was out there. I mean, if, if I hope I am correct, to say, you know, Go for the money. Oh, yeah. Go for the choose. You're gonna be drafted, man. Go, go on, go and make it right. and make it. Not not to denigrate that that decision, mm -hmm. but but you opted to say, wait a minute, there's another path. Yeah. And and you were a trailblazer in choosing that path. Oh. <laughs> and 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 that you 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 are to be congratulated for that. Thank and you. he's a mentor. And uh, the way he arrived at that decision, and he withstood the the, the common the, the the common path to choose something that's different, and and, and he's still young. <laughs> so it is so it is possible to take your time, make good choices, and you'll get there. Yes, sir. And you'll get there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> At, at 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 Oxford and going through the Rhodes Scholar, you met uh, a diversity of people. Because of my understanding of being a Rhodes Scholar is it, it, it you you accept it from very various different countries, right? Certainly. So um, how how was that experience? I mean, you mentioned it in your when you were talking, but yeah. how was that experience for you in? Meeting um, people from different cultures. Oh, it was different. it was amazing, uh, and it was certainly something that I could not realistically quantify before I went over there. I had to go there and truly experience that uh, meeting new people and breaking down those barriers, those walls, uh, w was just a, a life changing sort of experience for me. Um, you know, when I was at Florida State University, I was in the athletic bubble. I, I ate with my teammates. I, uh, I we, we had the same apartments. Um, we studied together. We lifted weights together. Uh, we trained together. Everything was in that athletic bubble. But when I got to Oxford, you know, the athletic bubble didn't exist anymore. Uh, and I had the opportunity to meet a young lady named Aisha Saad, who is a Muslim American young woman uh, from Egypt, born in Egypt. Raised in Cary, North Carolina, Rose Scholar went to UNC, full hijab and everything. I learned about the Muslim culture. I never met a Muslim person before, but I had a chance to meet her, mm -hmm. and I had a chance to know what the Quran stood for, and you know how maybe how hard it is to be a Muslim American living in America with some of the stereotypes and stigmatizations that happen with Muslims here now. Uh, so meeting her and befriending her, then I met a guy from Perth, Australia. Okay. Never been to Perth, never met an Australian before, but we became the closest of friends. He came to see me play my first NFL game in Nashville, Tennessee. That's how close we got. So just developing those networks, I feel like I'm more worldly now. Oh, I feel I have friends goodness. in Zambia, I have friends in South Africa, I have friends in Canada now. It was a truly tremendous experience and definitely one of the benefits of being a Rhodes Scholar. So not only you met them, you you have traveled. You have traveled to oh, yeah. to, to uh, traveled to these places. Yeah. Traveled to uh, different parts of Africa, Morocco. Been to Canada. I've been I've been all over the place. We've always stayed connected and stayed in touch. And now, I mean, we are we are friends for a lifetime. And uh, it's it's definitely again one of the many fruits of of earning that distinction of being a Rhodes Scholar and going to Oxford. 
Well, I, 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 do, I, do, you, uh, I do hope you, you, uh, you continued your enthusiasm about this program. Uh, have you had contacts with uh, with the uh, the uh, the health department in the NAS in the Bahamas? Uh, I I have not, I have not the 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 contacts I have in the Bahamas is obviously with uh, the Honorable Perry Christie and as well as Glennis Hannah Martin where we're very very close. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. But um, but not with the health department in particular. Yeah, they 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 did not they 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 are they are enthusi they are enthusiastic and and uh, not necessarily enthusiastic but. They are they are supportive of of the, of the mobile hospital uh, yes. initiative in the, in 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 the, in the Bahamas. They are they are yeah. they are supportive of it. We haven't had direct contact, but you know from from different sources, of people telling me they are uh, they are excited about any way that you know a son of the soul can come back or a daughter of the soul can come back. Oh and, yes, and oh do yes, something oh yes. Great. I know they they are very in, in encouraging and promoting the uh, the return. Uh, of uh, of uh, educated uh, citizens and uh, Bahamian Americans to that to that country, uh, of course, uh, you, as you represent, you don't have to be in the Bahamas in order to service the Bahamas. And uh, and this is a wonderful experience, a wonderful program that you are that you that you, you are you are developing. Um, now we 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 do we we do have in New York uh, a cluster a cluster of the Bahamians. Uh, what what would you like from from them if they are listening to this program and? Uh, <laughs> Rather than my going back to them and tell them, they, we can say that we had Myron, Mr. <laughs> Roll, on that program, and did you listen to him? And if they ask you, what would you want them to know? Well, I, I would want them to know that there is absolute unequivocal power in brain power in their creativity, that if they can come together and formulate ideas and ways to move the Bahamas forward, whether it be through technology. We see in Silicon Valley now, Tumblr just got bought by Yahoo for $1.1 billion, and Facebook, and all these other small startup tech companies. Why can't that happen in the Bahamas? We have the brain resources for it, and we have the enthusiasm to do it, but we just got to sort of bring it together. Then then ideas around government, how policy should, should work, and health. If you want to join me in this, this health push to get the Bahamas right, and maybe even awareness for education to get more Bahamians educated, perhaps here in the U.S. or over in England, and then bring that education, that brain resource. Don't have a brain drain. Bring it back to the Bahamas so that those educated intellectual individuals, as you said, could help, uh, you know, uplift and edify the Bahamas, you know, from, from the ground up. And, you know, there is great power in the, in the youth now. You see the youth movement over here in the U.S., people making change for good. That same thing could happen in the Bahamas. And because it's a smaller country with smaller numbers, with more accessibility to the Perry Christie's of the world and the Hannah Martins of the world, that impact can be felt a lot sooner, I think, and a lot more profoundly. So if I could say anything to them, I would say, bring your ideas together. Start thinking about innovative, creative ways to move the Bahamas forward in all the different areas that you see America youth doing it. It can happen. It's not unique to the United States. It can happen right in the Bahamas, too. We just got to work together. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So once you start working and that person starts working and you guys start getting each other better, and you know who knows where we can go. We can go great places. My goodness, it is good listening, good, very good listening to you. And, uh, and speaking, of ed speaking of education, uh, you know that uh, that uh, we had on this program uh, the uh, some professors and uh, and administrators from the College of the Bahamas, oh, yes. and they are in the process of of uh, moving that college to university status. Fantastic. So they they've been to New York uh, to meet with the Bahamian American communities and friends of the Bahamas and uh, and people in in academia uh, to to uh, to 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 help them create 
the kind of university that would that would be uh, progressive, uh, that would not only uh, be concerned about the the present situation, but but to develop programs that looking towards the ne next 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 twenty or so years, and to developed what they call the values, the values of the, of the university. And uh, I, I, hope they, I hope they talk to you. Uh, I hope so, too. Uh, I, 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 I so, one last thing I want to say to, uh, to those, that, that group that you wanted me to talk to. Yeah. Also, please, please do not be ashamed of, I don't want to say boasting, but, but allowing people to know that you are Bahamian and that, that you are proud of that. Because... When I go to Penn Relays, I see Jamaican flags all over. I see, you know, Jamaica this, Jamaica that. And I'm not saying, I'm not kind of condemning Jamaica. They love their country. They have tremendous pride for their country. But we have some incredible athletes and incredible things going on in our country as well. And I know we're humble by nature, but there's certainly some beautiful things happening. And I feel like people should know about it. We're not just Paradise Island and Atlantis that you see on TV and commercials. There's more to it than that. So please don't be ashamed. To, to have your flag thank you. and say it when you can. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. Thank you. I say it anytime I thank, can. Thank you very much. I, and and I, I think part of, we always worry about why, why do people of Bahamian descent sort of stand back? Right. Sort of stand back. And it is, I guess, the, the, the sociologists or the social psychologists would have a field day <laughs> in trying to figure out, figure out why, what, what the, reason, the reason is. But... In my experience, Bahamian Americans and people from the Bahamas, that small little country, can hold their own wherever they are. Absolutely. And uh, they are no different and sometimes better at achieving and, and giving, given the smallness of that country, what they have produced, if you analyze it, compared to other countries, it's far exceed the expectation of such a small country absolutely okay and, uh, and 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 I think we need to to stand up and we we sort of let our humility get in the way of progress mm. okay so we need to give back stand up and deliver that's right and and this is not a message only about Bahamians. This is a message to young people and to people of all descent is that you must come forward, you must produce, you must make an effort and deep down is the cultural values that you have to be proud of yourself and to allow yourself to develop and one of the the, the things that uh, that is that people and uh, a lot of folks do not allow themselves to develop, allow themselves to be who you can be. And uh, I think that uh, Mr. Roll here is uh, is a mentor, is a game changer, and uh, are a budding, renowned in the world. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything that you would, I know that you just mentioned, you mentioned the young people, but is there anything? Looking in the camera, we are uh, from New York City. We are originated from the Bahama Islands, trying to make a difference. But there are young people out there who are struggling. Who are struggling not only economically, but they are struggling uh, to make up their minds. Uh, they, are, they are buffeted by lots of things, lots of uh, negativities. And is, would you like to say something to those young people? I would. I would. Uh, you know, I would tell those young people uh, that. There have been people who have come before you, names you know and names you don't know, that have sacrificed a lot for you to be where you are. And your 
obligation, in my opinion, your repayment for that debt is to be all that you can be in all areas of your life. It's not enough to sit on the sidelines and be a spectator as the rest of the world gets on the stage and becomes a player. As the rest of the world gets on the stage and says, hey, we're going to make things happen. We're going to be the global CEO, uh, medical leaders of the world. You know, you have not only the power within, but you have a, an awesome God uh, and some incredible people that have come before you to help um, push you in this direction, to set this up, the stage up for you, so that you can make a huge, indelible impact and leave a great impact. And the beautiful thing about it, young people, is that when you do make that impact, when you do reach that success, when you do reach your goals, you make it commonplace for the people who look up to you and see you as that role model. Once you become that example of success, other people say, oh, you know what? He did it. She did it. I can do it as well. You make it tangible for them. You make it easier for them because people, we, as humans, we go where we see. We go where we see fit comfortable. My father told me I can be like a Paul Robeson. I can be like a Kofi Annan. I can be like a Nelson Mandela. And I actually thought it. They hardwired into my mind that I can be like these men. And I never thought anything else differently. So once I got to that area or I got to that level where I increased myself educationally and athletically, now people look at me and my journey and said, I can be a Rose Scholar and NFL player too because this guy from New Jersey with Bahamian Roots did the same thing. So that is the beautiful thing about life. You can always pay it forward. Once you get on that stage and become a player, once you make that successful leap, other people can follow behind. And it is your job to pull them with you and so that they get there. And then the next group, the next generation follows. And we just keep moving forward, just keep passing the baton forward. And, uh, you know, I'm just so excited that uh, that is what's going to happen for us. And I'm so excited to tell people that message. Very good, very good message to give, and I hope they and I hope they are listening. Let me let me say let me say to you is that looking forward, and you could be a visionary for a while. <laughs> where would you like to see your efforts, your foundation, say in the next ten years? What what would you do? What do you see? Wow. Well, I would like to see us grow and expand. I would like to see us do that mobile clinic in not only Exuma but other parts of the Bahamas as well and perhaps even move it out of the Bahamas if need be to other neighboring parts of the Caribbean that need assistance as well. I mean we obviously know Haiti has been hit with earthquakes and and some some difficult times uh, recently and I think you know services health services and medical services and medical professionals being injected into that community could serve them well. Uh, so I would love my foundation to be expanded. But in the next four years, I look forward to getting my medical degree at Florida State University, becoming a neurosurgeon, uh, perhaps developing a family, you know, having a good Christian family, uh, being, a, being a leader, uh, using my medical knowledge to impact the community around me, whether it be through speaking or whether it be through operating on people or whether it be through my foundation. Just be a holistic person that understands the world around him and has this foundation as his vehicle to make change into the world. That's what I love to see happen in 10 years. Very nice. Very, very, very nicely. Thank you. Nice. And uh, you impressed me. <laughs> you were impressive. Oh, well, thank you. And, uh, and I hope that you are impressive to a lot of people and that they would take your motivation and your skills into consideration and to use you as a model and as a mentor. Oh, one question, uh, this, you, 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 your message to young people, uh, and as a Rhodes Scholar, I know you're, you're, you're a great thinker, uh, a lot of college graduates are graduating and they still can't find jobs today. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, I, uh, it is difficult. Um, I, I don't think that you can necessarily predict how the economy is going to be, whether jobs are going to be available or not. What I would say to those college graduates is that continue, even if it's difficult right now to find a job, continue to network and expand the breadth of your skills so you are more versatile and you don't have to be pigeonholed into just one career that perhaps you saw for yourself or perhaps would have just been available for you 
five years ago when the market was a lot better, or 10 years ago when the market was a lot better. So if you have more value, you can do many things. If you're involved in this activity and you're of worth in many different areas, that I perhaps could um, give you a, a more advantage in trying to find a job. And if you bring so much worth, people will create positions and opportunities for you because they see that you're just too good to pass up. So that is, that's certainly something that I've always tried to take to heart, have a breadth of skill rather than just a depth. I always try to do many things and be able to balance it and, and have fun and decompress when I can, but just be able to, to have a multiple of skills, and that has helped me a long way. The economy is improving, but, but this, the, uh, the money is not flowing, flowing into, into the job market. Yeah. And uh, that continues to be a problem. And uh, I don't know, you as a foundation, you, you, find, you find that money flowing to your foundation <laughs> may not be as much as you would, you would like to so that you can, you can carry, on, uh, carry out your mission and, and, and the objectives and the programs that you, that you, have, uh, that we, that, that you would like. Yeah. Uh, people are not getting up to the money. You know, banks, they say banks are not getting, getting they're making a lot of money. I mean, in the last week, the stock markets have, have uh, skyrocketed, the best in many, many years. Mm. Uh, but the money is not is just not being spent, and and that in itself uh, flows into the difficulty in finding a job. Yeah. And finding and finding a job. Well, every every everything is connected as well. If you, just let's look at healthcare. I mean, because I know healthcare, I know it pretty well. Obviously, uh, something that I want to do for the rest of my life. But if people don't take care of themselves, they don't eat well, uh, then their healthcare costs go up because they have to get more medicine for, you know, a condition that may be able to be taken care of with proper diet and exercise. And you have to pay for this and pay for that, and you have to go see this visit, and you have to, you know, go to this gym to work off that, and you have to. You know, you have to eat more and consume more, and it's just it's it's compounding. And the healthcare industry is such a for-profit industry, especially in the United States, especially uh, that it affects other people. Everybody is connected. If one person is not carrying their load, being healthy individuals and having healthy children and having healthy friends and having a healthy community, then that affects this community next to it that may have to offset some of those costs by taxes or or you know paying higher premiums for healthcare insurance or things like that. So. If, 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 if all of us, not only Americans, but Bahamians and others, can make a better push toward, and just healthier in general, make a better push towards having individual, uh, an individual possession of their health and have it more, play more of a premium on their, the front of their minds, then that can lower some of the costs in this economy right now and help put some dollars back in people's wallets and, you know, perhaps give some people some more money. So that's that's one that's one way. I'm not an economist. I don't know it all, but healthcare, we could definitely save some money. Well, that yeah, way. well, well, well. Uh, the economy, uh, just, here goes the economy. Here goes the healthcare. Too. That's right. <laughs> healthcare too. They are all is all inter, inter, interconnected. Fairly. And uh, and in looking at your website, and uh, I'm happy to hear that you 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 emphasize uh, wellness. Mm. Wellness and fitness, yes. because uh, when we think of hospitals, you know, we talk, you, you know, they catch them at the bottom of the cliff. They have, you know, hospitals and uh, especially tertiary hospitals, so to speak, um, you know, you go to when you get sick. Right. But I see that you have put a lot of emphasis on not getting sick. Yes. On wellness and fitness, and uh, and 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 I think that's something that uh, that people in Exuma and people in the Bahamas that something that that's something that would resonate with them, because if the audience would know that I am I am a Bahamian. I was born and grew up in the Bahamas, and uh, the healthcare was not that. Not that great. I mean, uh, I'm not that old to 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 remember that uh, the uh, the doctor in the neighborhood in which I grew up was the Catholic priest, mm. and the dentist was the Catholic priest. 
Wow. <laughs> Uh, but as Jack of all as, trades. as luck would have it, is that we ate naturally. We didn't eat a lot of chemicals. And so your emphasis on wellness and teaching the Bahamian people how to be, eat well, be fit, avoid illness, don't get sick. Absolutely. But if you get sick, you know where to go. And to have some place to go is one of the greatest things that you can do. And I applaud you for doing that. Uh, and uh, I hope that you would come back again, okay, and tell us how far you have gone and what you've accomplished. And I hope that the Bahamian American Cultural Society and the New York Ameri Bahamian Americans and, uh, and uh, not only here but in Florida, in New Jersey, where your residency would join in this effort to make this effort a success. And so I want to thank you for coming on our program and uh, explaining the job of your foundation, the mission of your foundation, and your venture. And I thank you again for being a model, a mentor, and a game changer. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, audience, I thank you for listening. I, uh, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.